In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a news app using Flutter. Our application is going to be pulling the top headlines in the US in the category of business and then displaying a list of news articles to us. And if we are interested in learning a bit more about these articles, then we can actually click on any of these. And it's going to take us to the actual website where we can read about the news article in much more detail and look at the whole article. And this all is going to happen within our application. Besides this, in our list, we're going to be looking at an image for each of the articles that we're displaying, an actual title for each article, as well as the actual time at which it was published. I'd like to talk about the actual dependencies that we're going to be using and the resources that we're going to be using in this project before we actually begin coding. So the first thing that we're going to be using when we're building our application is going to be the DO HTTP networking package. And this is going to allow us to interact with our API, send HTTP get request to it and get data from it. So I'm going to come to my pubspec.yaml file and under dependencies, I'm going to be adding it. Once this is done, the next thing that we're going to be doing is using the URL launcher package to actually implement the ability within our application to open URLs. So I'm going to be adding that and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to let Flutter Puppets do it magic. And once this is done, I am also going to be showing you guys the actual place where we're going to be getting our news information from. So I'm going to be using the newsapi.org's API to actually get all of my news information from and actually show these articles within my application. They offer a generous pricing tier and to get started, it's completely free. So you can go right ahead, just register an account with these guys and they're going to give you an API key. To get the actual headlines that we're going to be displaying within my application, I'm going to be using the following endpoint, which is forward slash v2 forward slash top headlines. And then with some query parameters, which is the country for which I want the top headlines, and then also the category under which I want these headlines to come from, followed by our API key, which we'll get once you register an account. And then you're going to get somewhat of an output similar to this, where you're going to get a JSON object returned to you with a status, total articles, and then an articles key, which is a list of articles, each of which contains a bunch of information about individual articles. I'd also like to quickly point out the links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as the link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. So to get started, all I'm going to be telling you guys is under the models folder, I have an article class created, which is basically going to allow us to take the JSON form of an article, which the API is going to return to us, and then actually transform that into an instance of an article object. So this is basically what the article class does, as you can see. So there's nothing fancy going on in here. The only function that you should be concerned with is called the factory function to JSON, which basically does the following. It basically takes in a JSON object or a map, and then it returns to us an instance of our article. That's pretty much it, and that's all you need to know. Besides this, before we begin, I'd also like to quickly let you know that you can come to the constant dart file and for the news API key, actually paste in your API key here, and once you've done that, you and I are going to be at the same starting position. There's nothing added to the home page, which is the actual widget that's going to display these articles. So we're going to be coding all of the logic together. So I've quickly gone ahead and copied and pasted my API key into the consta Dart file. So let's get into it. Before we begin, I'll just like to give a quick test run to my application to ensure that it's working as intended. And once the actual application is running on the simulator, then I'll resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So now that the application is running on the simulator, let's get coding. The first thing that we're going to be doing is actually tackling how we're going to be getting information from the API. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is that within my stateful widgets state class, in this case, homepage state, I'm going to be creating a function which is going to return nothing. So future void. And I'm going to say that this function is going to be called underscore get news. Once this is done, I'm going to say that this function is going to be asynchronous and open the function body up. Before we can do anything, the first thing that we need to do is get the data. So what I'm going to do is perform an HTTP request where I'm going to do final response and then I'm going to be setting this equal to something. To perform the HTTP request, we need to use the do package. So for that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming to the top of my class. I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to mark it as final. It's going to be do type do and I'm going to be setting this equal to a new instance of the do object. So we're going to be using this object to perform our HTTP request. I'll come back and I'm going to do do.get and here I'm going to be passing the path to the actual resource which we want to send the HTTP request to. So in this case, if you remember correctly, if I show you the actual endpoint, it's the following. We have HTTPS and then newsapi.org forward slash v2 forward slash top headlines and then some query parameters. So we can copy everything up to here where it says API key equals two. So let me copy this 
and I'll come back and then I'll paste it in. And then for the API key, what I'm going to be doing is actually interpolating within the string the actual variable that exists within our constant dot file that stores our actual API key. So I'll do a dollar sign curly brackets. And then within this, I am going to say API underscore key. So there it is, news API key like so. And then with this then do command save and that's pretty much it now what we've done is actually define the complete url so now what i'm going to be doing is for the home page state i am going to be defining its init state function after the super classes init state function has been called i'm going to call get news and then within the actual get news function what i'm going to be doing is that after we have the response i am going to basically do print and then response like so, and that's pretty much it. But before we can proceed, the last thing that I had to do was actually add an await call here so that we wait for this to complete before we proceed to the next line. And hopefully if you have the debug console open and you restart your application, you should see an output on the console, something similar to this. So now that we know that our HTTP request was successful and we got the following result, we can continue with the next step. So the next step is to actually extract the articles from this JSON object. So for that, what I'll do is that I will create another variable. I'm going to call this articles JSON, and I'm going to be setting this equal to the response, the data property on it. And if you remember correctly, our articles are located under the articles key as a list of JSON objects. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to say response data and then articles, and then I'm going to cast this as a list and do command save. And that's pretty much it. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is calling set state. And then at the top of my state class, I'm going to be creating a variable, which is going to store a list of articles that we're going to be displaying. I'm going to say this is going to be a list of articles. I'm going to call this articles. And then I'm going to be setting this to an empty list to start with, and I'll import the actual article model from the models like so. Once this is done, I'll come back to my set state. And here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say articles is equal to articles JSON. But if I do this, this is not going to work. It is going to let me know that the list dynamic can't be assigned to a variable of list article. So we need to take our list, which is going to be a list of maps currently, and then convert that to be a list of articles. You can do this by doing article JSON, then map, then you're going to go over each of the articles. And what you're going to do is the following. You're going to do article dot from JSON and pass each article to it. And then finally, you're going to do to list and do command save. And what this line of code is basically doing is that it's going to map the articles list, which is a list of maps into a different list, which is going to be a list of article instances. And to prove this, what I'm going to be doing is actually printing articles here. And if I do this and I restart my application, you're going to see that now I get a list in which each of the elements is an instance of our article object that we had defined. But if I take this print statement and print it here in articles JSON, then this is going to be a list of maps currently. It's not going to be a list of article objects, as you can see. So now that we've fixed this problem, we can proceed to the next step. The next step is that if we take a look at these articles closely, we're going to find out that for some of these articles, it's going to tell us that the author is null or that it's been removed. So what I'm going to be doing is actually removing those articles from the rest so that we don't display them on the UI. So for this, what I'll do is that I'll say articles is equals to articles dot where and then I'm going to say that for each of the articles, I want to make sure that the article dot title is not equal to the following sting, which is a square bracket. And then within this, it says removed like so. So this is a pretty jank way of doing it for the purposes of this tutorial, it should be sufficient. And then finally, after this, I'm going to cast, I'm going to add a semicolon. It's going to give me an error saying that I need to cast this as a list. So I'll do that and do command save. And that's pretty much it. So with this done, that's pretty much all we have to do. And what I'll do to improve the performance of this code is that I am going to say that initially I'm going to create a list of article. I'm going to call this news article. And I'm going to set this equal to this. And then next step we'll do is that we'll remove anything from the news article that's been removed. And then what I'll do is that I'll set the articles list to be equal to news articles like so and do command save. And that's pretty much it. So now we're 
going to be when the actual app starts and this widget gets shown on the screen under the init state calling get news function which is going to go ahead perform an http request get the data transform that as intended and then save that information in our articles list so we can now display this information to display this information what i'm going to be doing is actually coming to the scaffold and firstly adding an app bar to it and the app bar is going to be fairly simple it's just going to be an app bar widget with the actual title being a text widget that says news like so and then for the body what i'm going to be doing is actually calling a function called build ui like so and then i'm going to define this function underneath like so a function that returns a widget it's called build ui and that's pretty much it then within this function i'm going to return a list view and specifically the builder function and it's going to ask me to define an item builder so for my item builder i am going to basically get a context and an index passed in and then i need to define what type of a widget is going to return for every element that's within our list but before we define how every element within our list view looks i also need to define the item count so i'll do item count and how many items do we need to show within our list well this is going to correspond to the articles list and then the length of it and do command save and then for each of these articles I am going to, for the item builder, say that we're going to return a list tile. And that's pretty much it. For the list tile, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is defining what the title is going to be. The title is going to be a text widget. And then I'm going to say that we are going to do articles. And then we need to access the article at the specific index. So what I'll do is that at the top, I'll create a variable final article set that equal to articles and then the specific index. And then here, all I can do is article dot title. And since the title can is an optional string, what I'm going to do is use the null aware operator and then say that if the title is null, then we just show an empty string like so to command save. And now we're seeing all of the titles as you can see. So that's pretty much working as intended. So we can keep moving forwards and see what the next step is going to be. So for the next step, what I want to do is show an image. So to show that image, what I'm going to be doing is actually adding a leading property to the list tile. This is going to be image.network. And then we need to pass it the actual endpoint for where the image is. So in this case, it's going to be article dot, and then I'm going to do URL to image. And this is also going to be an optional string. So what I'm going to be saying that we are going to be using this, but if this is null, then I have something defined in consta dart, which we're going to be using, which is called placeholder image link, like so, and do command save. So for the articles which have an image, we're going to be showing that image. But for articles that don't, we're going to be showing this placeholder image link. And this way, our app is not going to break. Then what I'm going to be doing is defining some styling attributes for this image to make this look better. So now all of them are uniform. And then we can move on to the next step, which is to define the actual time at which this article was published. So for that, I'll use the subtitle property. I'll add a text. And I'll do the same thing. I'll say that we'll do article.publish that. And then if this is null, then we just show an empty string and do command save. And now we can see the actual time at which this content was published. So the last thing I want to do now is actually implement the functionality of when you click on a specific article, it takes us to the website where we can read more about that article. So to do that, what we're going to be doing is that on our list tile, we're going to be implementing the on tap function callback. So every time we tap on our list tile, which now it's going to register taps, this function is going to be fired. So within this function, what we're basically going to be doing is actually calling the logic to actually launch the URL. So for that, what I'll do is that I will come to the bottom of my class. And here I'm going to say that I'm going to define a function which will return future void. It's going to be called underscore launch URL. And then what we are going to say that it's going to take in a URI parameter, which is going to be called URL. It's going to be async and then open it up. And here I'm going to say if await and then I'm going to say launch URL and this function is going to come from the package. So remember that our function is underscore launch URL and here we'll pass it the URL and then open it up. So basically what I'm saying here is that if launch URL is called the actual thing that we're going to get returned to us is a Boolean value since it returns a future bool will evading is and if we get a false return to us that means that we were unable to launch the URL or the URL launch was 
unsuccessful, then I'm going to throw an exception, letting us know that we could not launch the URL. But if this returns true, then this block of code is not going to be called. So that's pretty much all we had to do in terms of launching a URL. So now I'll come back and I am going to go to my list views on tap function. And here I'm going to say that I'm going to call launch URL. And then I'm going to basically do URI.parse. And here I'm going to pass the actual URL. So it's going to be the article and then it's going to be the URL parameter like so. Then I can do the same here as well like so and do command save. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So with this done, I'll give a hot restart to my application. Make sure that everything is working and that it loads the information, which for some reason it isn't. So let me take a look at it and determine what the issue is. Welcome back everybody. So I found the issue. The issue was under get news. All we have to do is make sure that here it's not articles, it's news articles. And do command save. And then if we restart our application, hopefully we should see the news articles showing up. So now if I scroll through these news articles, I can see all of them. And if there's one that piques my interest, let's just say the 100 billion Bitcoin and crypto ETF price crash. Click on that. It's going to take me to that specific website where I can read more about it and see everything that's going on. So with that said, that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed the tutorial, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.